Hey guys, this is Notzer, and today we're going to be doing something slightly different. I'm teamed up with the World Warship subreddit to make this Be a Better Captain replay contest a possibility. So this is going to involve two replays. First replay is Leona in his tier 7 Japanese destroyer, Shiratsuyu. And then a Yamato piloted by Platinum is our contest winner, and that's going to be the second replay. So the idea is hopefully I can explain to you what I would look to do to improve my opening or moment-to-moment -moment situational awareness so that we can pilot ourselves through a successful game. Now, this game is really short. This is your typical rush forward and die DD game. I wanted to try and explain why certain things go bad when a DD moves forward like this. So, Leona, you gotta use camouflage. You don't have the best concealment that you could possibly have. Therefore, you are vulnerable to enemies. He should very easily be able to spot the Akizuki with his improved detectability from the camouflage applied to a ship. It's, it's not a small number. You know, it's two or three hundred meters, which could be the difference between being first spotter and never being spotted or being a mutual spot situation, which the Akizuki clearly did. And in this moment, 50% of his health is gone. And it's only because he's not using camouflage. That's literally the only reason. The Akizuki would not have had that equal spot advantage with its gun system, and there would be no reason for Leona to fire his guns. So use your camouflage. It makes a huge difference. Now Leona is also not using any premium consumables. And, you know, he's, he's cheap. He's, he's poor. It's okay to be poor, but it's a mistake to try and save money by omitting the camouflage. The camouflage creates value, it doesn't reduce it. So you're gonna bring back the cost of the camo and more just by equipping it to the ship. In this exact same game, the improved surface detection would have forced the Akizuki to be able to do zero damage to Leona and the Shinatsuyu. He would have to have smoked out similarly and hide similarly, but it, oh, is he gonna get a torpedo hit? If he gets his torpedo hit, does this mean he's going to... Oh, he just barely survived. Uh, but he survived half a second longer so that he can die to dots. But this is a perfect example of why camouflage is so important. It's the difference between having 100% life and having 50% life for Leona. And that's a big deal. As a DD, that could be the difference between you making 200,000 credits and losing money. You must feel like and you should do this, spend it on the camouflage. Invest in it, it will invest back in you. So, Leona, he's in position to easily capture this. Unfortunately, there is an aircraft carrier in this game, and he is using a torpedo reload booster instead of smoke. He's very brave. I can't get by with doing that in a CV game. They just focus me down, and then they're unrelenting in keeping me spotted. And he's also brave doing this so close to the Enterprise. If the Enterprise was worth half his salt, he would have probably detected him, and the Alsace or the Izumo would have finished him off. But because he's lackadaisical in his squadron play, I mean, there's nothing bad that's going to happen to Leona, at least right now. He's got Torpedo, and that's not going to work out. Some people might be critical of his lack of turning the AA off. However, if you look at his AA range, it's less than his air detection. As long as your AA range is less than your air detection, you never have to turn your air off. You're going to be air detected before your AA even starts being activated. It's just one less thing that you have to worry about, which is nice. But what he should be worrying about is setting his priority sector. This is prior to 8.7, so he could have set it and it would have been on the compass, but clearly he hasn't. Now he's still in this area, and this is sort of the weird part of the game for some DDs. They just don't know what to do with themselves. You know, they want to move forward more. Why wouldn't I want to go in and get massive torpedo hits on every single target in front of me? Well, that's probably not going to happen. And that's probably something that um, is in everyone's mind. It's a dream, but it's just not a reality. And he notices that the enemy is pushing up on the east side. And yet, what is he doing? He's sailing towards the enemies. He's getting closer to them. There's clearly an aircraft carrier somewhere, and yet he doesn't seemingly care, but this is going to be his downfall. You can't play like this. Instead of pushing forward, 
he should try to maintain a front with his team. Maybe he should go back over to C point and p potentially try and capture it, not push into enemies where he can be easily spotted by aircraft and radar and killed. So there's a lot of little things that add up to a bunch of things for DDs. And this is clearly camouflage. Camouflage is the difference between him having all his health and being able to do whatever he wants to sort of being stuck on that flank. Now, for the main feature, we've got Platinum. Platinum is in his Yamato, and this is going to be a more drawn out game. Honestly, this game is going to look exactly like your typical game currently happening right now. One team limbing trains much better than the other, and every domino falls in the deck, and it's it's over. There, there's no recovery. It, you know, they couldn't run through you fast enough with their blades. You know, there's a lot of Game of Thrones stuff going on. And it, it's brutal. It's brutal to have 10, 11 ships alive on one team and for all the other ships on the enemy team dead. So we're going to see how Platinum works through a similar situation. And I'm going to talk through exactly what I think. Now, Platinum's using premium consumables, which I am absolutely happy. In my opinion, everyone should use camouflage and premium consumables. The premium consumables are basically how you can be a better version of your ship. It's like getting a tier bump because they recharge faster and there's an extra charge of them, both of which allow you to be more aggressive more frequently and continuously. So I highly encourage you always invest in camo and always try to invest in premium consumables. Now, if you need to skimp, on premium consumables might consider scout aircraft or the fighter to skimp on or maybe a less important consumable damage control and heal for a battleship is way too important i I'll always go premium with those you're not going to regret it and yes oh but it costs money yeah it does but you should be able to generate more of the credits that you spent by being more effective and being able to recover more that's the trade-off now Platinum is using a scout aircraft, and you might be wondering, scout aircraft, why would you need 32 kilometers in the Amato? Well, we have the perfect example of why you would want the scout aircraft. To get these nice cheeky shots over islands at camping American ships, let's be real, they're, they're camping Americans. They're either camping Americans, or there's the Smolensk, the Colbert, or the Japanese DDs, you know, Akizuki, Kit Kitakaze, and Harukubo. If they're camping behind an island, Scout aircraft is perfect for that. Also, the scout aircraft is going to allow you to spot around yourself much easier compared to the fighter. The fighter is basically only for self-defense from an aircraft carrier. So I actually really like Platinum's choice in his consumables, his equipment, all that stuff. He's using a camouflage. He actually has Yamamoto in his Yamato. He has faster turret traverse because of that. That's really good on the Yamato because it has very slow turret traverse. But look at how, what is developing in this game so far. Platinum's dev mate is capturing A point. The enemy's captured B. And it looks like they've put a lot of effort to the C side. So what that communicates to me, the side that is not being pressed by the enemy team must press in return. And ooh, very nice shot. Very nice shot. So Platinum is using a combination of the scout aircraft and the cursor indicator on the minimap that was added uh, probably four or five, six patches ago. But what it does is it displays on the minimap where your cursor exists in 3D space. And you can use that to lead the target in whatever direction they might be heading. They also have a heading indicator when you have a target selected. If you combine these together, it's very difficult to fail at putting the line inside of the circle and giving enough lead that the time to target is adequate now this enemy daring showed up in front of platinum and i'm i guarantee platinum wanted to use a combination of his guns with maybe radar and maybe the friendly dd and go at this guy but it's not looking good he actually does check to see 10 kilometer range torpedoes is that accurate yes yeah i have 10 kilometer range torpedoes um so he doesn't know for certain exactly how dangerous or how helpful his teammate or this enemy daring can be. And that's okay. 
you don't need to know these numbers. You just know that if I'm fairly close, if I'm within radar range of a typical equal tier tier 10 DD, they can probably hit me with torps. And he tries, he tries. Boy, Platinum tries to get a radar out of the Salem, and it doesn't work. But he tried to do it when he needed it instantly. And if I know anything, you can't try and formulate a plan in the moment as effectively as if you could have pre-planned. And he could have pre-planned because it's quite clear that there's a daring operating in that area. Maybe a combination of the friendly daring plus the Salem radar and his guns could have easily killed the daring enemy quickly so that they can address another issue. But what's happening in this game is Platinum's team can't do anything on the east side, is getting pushed in on the west side even though they outnumber the enemy, and they sort of feel helpless. They feel hamstrung by the situation, and Platinum clearly frustrated with the Salem, but let's be real. It's not the Salem's fault. He didn't know that that was going to happen, and he certainly didn't plan for it. Maybe he doesn't even have radar. We don't even know that. You need to try and discuss this stuff a little bit more than after the events already occurred. You know, hey, Salem, you got radar? Yeah, I got radar. Okay. Well, if we get in a situation like this, would you be willing? It's a good conversation to have at the beginning of the game. It is also something that, you know, oh, well, they're, they're a random in a random game. They're not going to do it. They don't care anything. I think players definitely care about working together. And one key bit of information that has really made it very easy for me. Everyone knows what they're going to do. They don't know what other people are going to do. So as long as you just support a teammate who knows what he's going to do and enhance with guns or whatever, it can quite easily be a two versus one in a random situation without, you know, comms or talking and oh, platinum. He hits a great shot on the camping Wooster. The Wooster, big mistake. That enemy daring. He is so brazen. He actually is sailing into Platinum's area. And nobody cares about the trouble I've seen. Like, it's a daring. Platinum, it's not something that he wants to care about. He wants the ships behind. He doesn't want them that's within 10 kilometers. You know, he's not going to get a big enough damage, or he probably felt like, I wouldn't be able to rotate around fast enough. Well, you probably could if you just would tag team with your teammate. The daring is clearly still there, and it's not like he's going away. The problem is still there, guys. Don't ignore the DD. I say this all the time on my stream. Shoot the DD. They're such a huge threat that if you get a sniff of them, that close, you should take it. And, you know, we're still losing teammates. The Daring still operating very independently, even though he's way overextended. Platinum is looking for some damage. I mean, he's literally done 20,000 damage this entire game. And it's partially because the position he chose. Let me go to the southwest side of the map and pull all the way back so that I have, you know, I have to fire from max range. Well, you know, that, that works fine if the enemy wants to push into that side. But once you see that the enemy is clearly pushing the other side, you either have to change your plan so that you can support the side of the map that isn't working very well, or you need to press into the enemy to create a flank. Having this sort of stationary, we're just going to, we're just going to have a dominant force on a flank and not push, will just lead to stuff like this. The team has broken, you know, they don't have a plan and they're just trying to get damage that they can when, you know, in reality, if players would have just addressed the problem in the order that it, it happened, the order of operation, you see a DD, you kill the DD. If you see a target that's moving forward or trying to capture a base, you, you kill him. But if, if they don't do that, then you end up with 20,000 damage and nothing happening. But Platinum's moving over to the enemy Yamato, and, you know, that's good. He's trying to fire on cooldown at the enemy Yamato, but the enemies have four DDs, all of their DDs up. And let's be real, the, the DD play on the enemy team is not spectacular. 
You can't be seen that frequently. Oh, finally. Finally, they take out one of the... They have a mutual destruction. Platinum's friendly DD dies to the enemy DD. So what ended up happening, Platinum's team didn't get any value. And in fact, the enemy got more value. They didn't lose their daring. Darings. They never pushed into A. They were able to bottle them up. And all they lost was a daring for a daring. They got out like bandits. And it shouldn't happen that way. You know? It just seems like players are doing their own thing. And it's great to do your own thing. But just consider for one second the people around you. And you might find that the game works out a little bit better. But Platinum's going after the Amato. The Kitakaze on the enemy team took an okay amount of damage. The Amato's out of his smoke, though. He can't really hide. And we've got Platinum over here firing on cooldown. Now, Platinum, I know you know this, but you don't want to show quite as much side. You want to get just enough side that you can fire all your guns, but you have a good enough angle. And it ends up working out just fine for Platinum. But he could have angled just slightly better. It's not as big of a deal as the opening, as the the game wearing on and not being able to get your damage down because everyone is 20 kilometers plus. If everyone's 20 kilometers plus from your position, you should probably move forward a little bit. It is a game, and part of the game is, you know, doing damage, capturing, but keeping your ship alive. But you really need to try and contribute each and every moment. You know, find something to do that can help the team push forward to victory. Capture a base, move towards a flank, you know, uh, get in position to set up a fire shot and to just sit on a flank all game long, guys, it, and for your team to not be winning. I mean, there's no point in that. Why would the worst team in a league not make any improvements? They're the worst team in the league. You're never gonna be successful if you're not looking to improve. and. Trying to defend the strong flank and not pushing forward is a mistake. The only time you want to be in a defensive position, obviously, if the enemy is pushing towards you, or if you're having to deal with something, but if you have the numbers and the flank is seemingly, you know, you, got, you have the full suite of DDs, cruisers, and battleships with radar, why can't you be aggressively looking to take advantage of the enemy's deployment. There's always going to be someone vulnerable. And if you pick on that guy, and you pick on the next guy, and you pick on the next guy, you come to the end of the game. And, and this was just too much inaction from collectively the West. And honestly, the East did a terrible job because half of the team was retreating. The other half was pushing into the, the living train, the, the full push from the enemy team. That's not going to work. You need to try and work together and take advantage of the strengths of your flank. And I know, I know, there's a, this is a lot of games, people. 70% uh, of my games are blowouts right now. And the simplest thing to fix those blowouts, just like this game, don't let them take it. You know, if you if you gotta put some of your health, put some of your health out there. I mean, your health is meaningless. You've already fully paid for the ship. Whether you take zero points of damage or 99.9% .9 of your health, you're still going to pay the exact same price. So, take a little bit of damage, guys. If you got some to spare, if it's a if it's a one versus one and a teammate is suffering, don't hold fire and let him die. Open up and help him out, and collectively, you two will be able to beat that one. And maybe that means he survives. But that daring, those darings on the West should have died so many times. And it's not only Platinum's fault, clearly we're seeing it from his point of view, but it's just a, a systemic play that isn't helping anyone. This, I'm just going to stay here and this is what I'm gonna do the whole game, this is all I wanna do. Well, you're gonna get what you deserve. And in this instance, they deserved a loss. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent or the most relevant uploads. You could also choose to subscribe to my channel. We do daily World of Warship videos. First impression, how to, news, and review related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. Take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.